I recently bought the Creality CR10 Max. It's a 3D printer that costs a good bit of money. Actually, I spent the entire ad revenue of this channel on this printer for, of course, doing videos with it. And the best way I can describe this printer is hot garbage. Yeah, so here's why you should watch this video. If you want to buy this, uh, I'll tell you why I don't. If you have the problems that I have, the five, six, or seven problems that I couldn't find any help on anywhere on the internet, I also tell you how to solve those. And finally, uh, you get to see probably, oh, sorry, the worst review of a product I will ever give. Actually, I wasn't even planning on doing a review of this. It was so bad that I had to. So the channel's ad revenue is here. I was ready to do some cool computer part printing. I was going to do some custom shrouds, cases, etc. And I instead ended up spending multiple weeks trying to troubleshoot a lot of problems. And my summary will be included in this video. In order to break this down a little bit more, this printer comes in right around $1,000, which by no means is easy chump change. It's a lot of money. I'm not going to even argue with that situation. And when I spend something that I've worked on this channel for three or four years now, and when I spend that ad revenue that I've gotten from this channel on there, all of it pretty much, on a product that I'm hoping is going to you know, increase, increase the quality of these videos and such, I, I really feel that it's necessary to at least kind of go over what was wrong with it. So I'm going to break down the problems that I had right off the bat um, just so that you kind of get familiar with why you shouldn't buy it or if you do choose to buy it because of the large print volume then you definitely want to go through and at least consider some of these problems that I mentioned. So first up one big thing to consider especially the biggest problem that I had was I had this weird layer height issue and actually I don't know if I have anything on me directly but the layer height was so messed up, freakishly messed up. Um, so usually, which keep in mind also, this is not my first 3D printer. Um, I've gotten much, much cheaper ones uh, that I've been using, I've enjoyed and all that stuff. Heck, I use the stuff in my university. So I'm very familiar with 3D printing in general. And I feel like at least I'm familiar with most of the mechanical way that this works. And getting this weird layer height issue really stumped me. I asked around a lot on the internet and no one was really able to tell me much. They, you know, I, nothing that I already knew. They thought it was magic number issues or something like that, which was a good guess to be, to be fair. But in reality, the uh, carriage design that pulls the entire printing carriage with the extruder and all that stuff upwards, the two motors on both sides basically are attached like with a little thin piece of plastic. So when you're you know, when you're pushing it up, it, it bends and then it messes up. So it's so insanely, or it just blows my mind that this was not designed better. Like this took me three weeks to figure out what was wrong with my prints before I could go through and actually print something properly. I spent three weeks just to solve a problem that should have been solved from the factory. So I understand that, you know, that's bad and all. Okay, great. So when I first did my first printing and stuff, I ended up, and the reason why this board is here, this is the pad that comes with this printer. This is a, or the, not the pad, the printing surface. The way that this, the offset or these weird little, the motors, you know, constantly warping and moving and stuff, what happened is somewhat, they would get slightly bent and then they would cause slight differentiations or slight changes in the way that the printing surface worked. So, you know, you'd, you'd have a slightly lower here. So that's why you get lay, you know, the layer compression all the way up. Well, what would happen is it would level and then it would be slightly off. So it would either scrape the entire surface of the, the board, um, print it way too freaking close or not even make contact at all. And then you'd be ended up with another failed print. So much so that this stuff on here right now, I can't even get off because of this issue. And I didn't even con try contacting them for this. I was like, okay, well, you know, I obviously, they probably are going to be like, oh, you messed up the board. Okay. I mean, it's not like I'm getting a freaking degree in any type of engineering, but sure, 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 sure. So I messed up the board, right? Okay. You know, my fault. I, I did. I configured the Z offset wrong. Okay. Okay. So that's bad enough. And, you know, you go through and you mess up the board and, you know, I had to actually spend my money for my job, 9 to 5 job this summer on getting the new 
base plate, which actually I like a lot. But still, you had to spend hard-earned money and time to figure out what was exactly wrong with this. So, yeah, it was kind of really frustrating. So, that's one problem. Okay, I understand that we, ha we can go over, you know, that's just one problem. That's not that bad. But wait, there's more. So, when this originally showed up, um, in the box actually, I had a... I was assembling it and the extruder module was pretty banged up. Um, like it was bent. I have pictures of this. It's bent. It looks weird. And so I had to spend a couple hours actually trying to take it all. Well, not a couple hours, probably like an hour taking it all apart, bending all the parts back together so that the fan actually cools the extruder and not the filament or not the printed surface actually. And, I had to spend a good bit of time doing that as well. So I was like, when I first opened it, I figured, okay, this is not really that bad. It was packaged pretty well. I don't see how it could have gotten damaged in shipping, but who knows? I was like, okay, I'll give it to the benefit of the doubt. Okay, so as I said, I just kind of figured it was just a, kind of an error and I gave the, the, them the benefit of the doubt. It wasn't actually anything, didn't end up being broken. It just needed to be bent and messed with and taken apart and reassembled. So I was like, okay, that's not that bad. Fine, fine, fine. And no, I didn't break anything or misplace my BL touch sensor or anything like that. Like this is all put back together. So I was like, okay. So then a couple other things that just odd quirks and stuff that were also kind of minor inconveniences. The um, fan duct on the that blows down onto the fill, uh, printed surface also decided that it's 3D printed and it's pretty brittle and the design is pretty crappy. So it snapped and the fan duct fell off and you can't really put it back on that that's super gluing it or gluing it back on. So I had to print another one on my other printer. It was really frustrating because if you didn't have enough, another printer, you'd have to either tape it or put it back on and hope that it worked while you printed another one. And it was just kind of frustrating there as well. I at least think for this kind of a price, why would you have to spend that kind of money and get so many problems with it? And then on top of it, the way that this film, you know, this, this is the out of the box kind of design here. It's, it's how it tells you to install it. So interestingly, you have the filament feeder needed to be actually I need to print a filament feeder because the fact that it was creating so much dust and do I mind you I've tried moving this all multiple places and this works best because well it saves the most space but still it's very frustrating that it's you know you, you need there's just the filament designs puts dust everywhere and that's not safe to breathe in or anything like that it's just poorly designed so the main concern I have is the fact that the main two motors that carry the z-axis are completely not supported i actually ended up shoving lego bricks underneath the motors to keep them stable and that actually solved my problem of print errors and you can watch these as they wobble around as they try to move up the carriage and it's so it just blows your mind how this can be in such an expensive product like what and then i you know all the reviews don't mention this like this is I paid my own dang money for this, my whole multiple years of ad revenue money on this. And I understand if like there was something, you know, maybe like a crack or something and I contacted them. So if I wanted to contact them for support, their website says go create a Facebook account. Now I have personal actual, um, I don't know if, I, you know, I should call it religious, but it's more like I have some personal issues with Facebook and how they handle data. And it's just large corporations in general we can talk about, which I mean, I'm on YouTube, right? But Facebook is definitely up there and the ones that I can stay off of, I will. That's why my Instagram and all that stuff I don't have. But point being, I had to create a Facebook account just to get support. I sign up for the support and I try to join the group. And we're still not in. This is multiple, a good bit of days later. So, yeah. So no support either. Um, everywhere I contacted, everywhere I looked, there was no really way to do so. And it was kind of frustrating because they just told you to ask their community. So I went to the you know biggest 3D printing discords and stuff like that and posted all over Reddit. Nobody knows how to, nobody knows what's wrong with the Z-axis. And so after, as I said, three weeks, four weeks of trying to get this to print properly, I finally did. So after I got it printing, well, we got actual decent prints. I mean, the, the this custom, uh, or this, yeah, mo all the mods that I've done to it afterwards, getting it working finally, make it so much better. And... 
in the end, um, I would have returned it had it been that I not th had it if it hadn't been that I had thrown away all the packaging. I would have easily returned it, and I probably would have gone for a completely different brand altogether because this experience was, as I said, describes this as hot garbage. Um, because if you did not have any technical knowledge or you just expected, you know, I understand that there is some level of knowledge you should have when you do 3D printing. Like there is, you should know, you know, how, how the machine works, but it should in theory print out of the box. That's kind of what you expect when you buy something, especially for this price and to get something that immediately tears up the bed out of the box immediately fails to print properly immediately has you know zebra lines i'm going to call them it just really and it pretty much ruins like you can't use the product with it you can't print anything nice i actually ended up having to print stuff anyway for work and it's really frustrating and i really can't recommend anybody going through and buying this 